Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for North Dakota Today. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Chris Berg, and we have a special guest that we're going to sneak uh, on here uh, in just a minute. Uh, everybody loves a cute Yoshi. puppy. Oh, do you want to come? Okay. Serafina, Mama, Mama's going to pass off the puppy here. Do you want okay. to hold that? Oh. Oh, Aww. come, 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 come. He's trying to escape. He's like, no, where, where are we going? Actually, look at how nice. Oh, so cute. So you didn't need to run. You know, you're comfortable in this spot. Is this Although not just remember, the prettiest little the, dog? Yeah. Remember the ear thing, though? He's a little tense right now. Remember how we learned to read Oh, yeah, we ears? did. We haven't yeah. had our so friends Yoshi. on for a while. Yoshi, it's okay. I know. It's You know, it's his... his his first time on TV. His, her? Yep, her. Her, her first time on TV. Okay. You know, I just wish that we could have, like, a, um, a puppy in the newsroom studio I every day. I think you might want to give her back to Serafina. She does not look comfortable. She looks a little... Remember the, the puppy years thing? Mom, do you want to come a little bit closer? You think that she's scared? She just kind of has okay. the, the ears where I'm like... Mm. Oh, Okay. We can let we can let Mama take you back here. We need to have a little puppy in our, our I studio. Agree. Thank you for letting us show off your puppy. How old is the puppy? Twelve weeks. Twelve weeks. Serafina is one of our uh, studio people who uh, she's kind of hiding just off camera. <laughs> I'll give you the puppy. Can back. we have like maybe a puppy cam, guys, and we'll just follow Yoshi for most of the show? <laughs> oh. Now she's like, oh. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> I love Yoshi. Puppy's just making What kind it. is she again? She's a mix? Uh, three-fourths pit bull, one-fourth Rottweiler. Three-fourths pit bull, one-fourth Rottweiler. And so, super cute. Let's see how he's got the tail down. We wish we could show you. Can we get a puppy cam? Like, she's got the tail down. <laughs> Remember when we, we had the... We should get this sponsored, like a puppy cam? <laughs> yeah. Make this a thing. <laughs> make this a thing. She said she'll make it a thing. Okay. That would be we'll fantastic. Follow the development of, of little Yoshi. You know, you see on the Today Show, remember they had like their own little puppy? We need like a North Dakota Today puppy, right? I love it. Let's work on that. We've got to work on the bus. It just calms us. Oh, yeah. She's like, I, that's my mama over yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fun. You know what? I was thinking about, you know, all this stormy weather, dogs like this and puppies. It's probably been hard on them. Uh, I've been hearing even the CBD. You know, we have our uh, Coda yeah, Organics yeah. on. I've been hearing that some of the most popular products right now for CBD are for pets. Oh, because really? of our stormy weather. Um, I'm not sure. I think Yoshi's too young for that. But uh, again, last night we had super crazy stormy weather. Yes. Did you see some of the pictures? Uh, this is Hillsboro, where the uh, canopy uh, at the uh, Casey's store was almost blown over. What? Yeah, isn't that, that crazy? Um, that was uh, taken by one of our viewers, uh, John Brown. Thank you for sending that in to us. Uh, and also, Nancy Peterson snapped... Once again, wow. a massive tree that was uprooted, and that's uh, Golden Lake, North Dakota. And so when we started hearing reports of, of the damage, Golden Lake is kind of near Finley. And so then that's where Kelly Hubbard uh, was this morning on the Valley Today. Huge trees knocked over. Um, roofs wow. blown off of, look at this one, Chris. It's like the poor lake home there it was just ripped apart. What? The roof is off of it. Um, and I know she was reporting this morning at least nine pontoons, um, just like tossed around like nothing. She was actually standing next to a, a grill that you could see was just tossed around in the wind as well. But nine pontoons damaged, damaged or destroyed. Yeah. And so Callie, she's about uh, five four, and the the big roots that you see here when she was standing in front of it was like halfway. Like sh her head was just halfway. Like some of the oh the trees, just huge. So they were huge, huge trees. Um, these were just a couple of the pictures she sent back to us. If you'd like to see some of her reports um, that she had on, I did cut some of those, and you can see them at valleynewslive.com. Just incredible, um, you know, sad video. On the other hand, I think most of these homes were lake homes. It doesn't matter if they weren't living, if they're not right. their main home, it still hurts um, if your home is, is destroyed like this. So major damage overnight, but kudos to our, you know, First Alert Storm Team, they were on it. They said, hey, watch out, this is gonna happen. They knew days in advance, and... I wanna show some other stuff too. Heather, if you don't mind, can I, are you for a minute to uh, show this? So I was on Hutch Johnson's Twitter feed earlier. Wait till you see this pic, Lisa. It, this is in Hillsboro, and it is a lightning strike. But I've never seen. Oh, yes. Look at that! It's like a circle, it. and then some. Right? I mean, it, <laughs> it looks like it almost came. Out, oh, looks like it almost came out of the ground and then somehow spun around <laughs> for 
a lightning strike. You ever seen something That's like that? That's weird. No, I haven't. That's incredible, right? So Hutch has got some other great pics up there as well. And I guess where I was in South Fargo, I mean, it rained, but boy, it wasn't like a monsoon earlier in the week. So it must have been really bad up north, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah. The wind, you know, we've been complaining about the wind here. I feel like we've had no break from, now we're getting a, a break from the wind. Um, it's also going to be cooler as well. Yeah. Um, back into the 70s, which a lot of people are looking forward to. But right, um, windy here, but to knock over trees, rip off the roof off a home, um, you know, and you know, those boats were tied down and uh, they're right. just flipped over and trashed. So that that's, that's the saddest part, <laughs> especially since today is, you know, National Go Fishing Day. So you have to fish from the dock. Do you know where I was going with that? I actually forgot about that. There's always a, a great holiday every day, but today is uh, National Go Fishing Day. They say uh, even, what is it, even a, a, a bad day fishing is still... A great day. <laughs> Seriously, you're out on a boat just hanging out. I mean, it's fantastic, especially if the sun's out, you're getting all bronze, you got some good food. Well, and even today, you know, it's kind of cloudy and still raining in some areas. I think that's when the fish bite. I don't fish, but I feel like um, fishing opener in Minnesota, it's in, you know, May, Mother's Day weekend, and it's yes. always not very nice. And I feel like they love that because it's, you know, the fish <laughs> is bite. Your, is that your Bay Winkleman coming out, Boot Out? <laughs> <laughs> June 18th, National Go Fishing Day. Uh, maybe, well, it's only nine in the morning here, but. Um, maybe you need to call in sick or just tell the boss you're going to have to leave a little bit early and yeah. uh, just drop a line in your favorite lake, river. You know what I love, too? We've talked about this a lot. There's a lot of just even retention ponds in Fargo that you can just go fish out of besides the Red River. So you don't even have to go very far uh, to go fishing. So I remember as a kid having a, a little baby tackle box. Did you? Yeah. My, my husband still brings the girls fishing. That's so. nice. Yeah, I just I, I kind of got past the... I'm more of like a water sports person. I like to go tubing and water skiing and I see surfing more like now. a like hanging out at the Four Seasons. That's kind of your vibe, yeah, right? Yeah, more of like a glamping <laughs> kind of thing. I grew up cam camping in a tent, and now I, I look and I'm like, oh my goodness. My parents would bring us out, and we loved it. Four kids, so six of us in one tent. <laughs> we loved it. Oh my we loved it. And now goodness. I'm like, maybe we should look at getting a camper. <laughs> So no, I'm not. I'm not so um, pampered that I have to stay at the Four Seasons. But I'm not sure if I want my. Uh, I only have you two kids. Wanted, but you can you imagine one four, tank, yeah. four kids? <laughs> oh, now I understand why my parents were. <laughs> no, they were uh, obviously very patient people. So. Where did you guys go camping at? Uh, we went to Lake Skakawea. So oh, also nice. major difference from you know I, I grew up in Western North Dakota, so we would go to the lake and it was cold. So we came, moved out to the valley, uh, and we go to Minnesota Lakes Country. It's like, this is like a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> the water is so much warmer and uh, nice and, and small. But yeah, no, we camped um, state campgrounds, uh, downstream, you know, um, campground by the uh, water, you know, the power plant. Yeah. So that's where I grew up. Amazing. Did you guys ever go up to Lake Metagoshi? Yep. That you wasn't did. too far from us either. So a lot of people from my hometown had a... Lake places or it's like a beautiful forgotten gem in our state, right? Yeah, Lake Mitagoshi. I used to do like 4 H camp and stuff there. So, yeah, Lake Mitagoshi. Wow, you pulled one out there. I didn't even know you knew anything now. <laughs> west of Castleton. So, Wait, I want to go back to your 4 H camps. Were you, what were you doing? I, was a, I did, well, yeah, I did 4 H camp. We did the, um, you know, there was lots of fun stuff we would do there. It was like a week long, and yeah, we would go swimming and nice. in the lake, and yeah, so. Oh, childhood. I know, right? Childhood memories. Did you raise animals, too? Um, I lived in town, but we did have chickens and cows. My dad was a farmer, so, but just, you know. So, yeah, I, I did, I do have a trophy at home that I've kept because I keep everything of a of a award-winning chicken at the top. Chicken. <laughs> uh, first place at the uh, Burke County Fair one year. So, yeah. So, I need I to did know. not raise, like, I didn't show any, you know. You know, I didn't have an award-winning steer or anything like that. What determines a top chicken? Like, that just it was, you know, perfect form, <laughs> clean. I don't know. I can't really remember what um, made for an award-winning so chicken. So do you show it like in best of yeah, show? Yeah, you like do. You take the yeah. dog and right. Yeah, like, and you prance you like it. No, you don't. No, you don't. But they do. The judges do look. <laughs> do you, you put a totally, leash on? Yeah, I thought I, I should have kept going. Like, like oh, put a, okay. I put a leash on my chicken, <laughs> and I pranced around in a circle. Best of show. That did not happen. Oh my gosh. But I miss county fairs. So, I, you know, even county fairs aren't happening this year. So, there's probably a lot of kids who are raising some award winning chickens. Yeah. And. You might have to send them a ribbon or something. 
Okay, a ribbon. I'm not giving up my chicken trophy, though. <laughs> not yet. I should find that and bring that in. Okay, how about we uh, go from, we're going to go from chickens and rural uh, county fairs to entertainment news this morning. A midsummer treat for romance lovers and a miniseries follows women of color in politics. Michelle Medina has our eye on entertainment this morning. And that young people are wholly A new PBS docu-series highlights women of color as they change the face of U.S. politics. There are not enough people on the inside that look like me. The two-part show titled And She Could Be Next follows female candidates of color across the country as they work toward transforming the political landscape. The sort of traditional notions of what's possible in American politics are being challenged every day. The miniseries follows Stacey Abrams of Georgia, California State Senator Maria Elena DeRazzo, and Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, among others. And She Could Be Next debuts June 29th on PBS. Eight couples who've overcome obstacles tie the knot on the upcoming reality series, Say I Do. Tiffany definitely deserves a wedding of her dreams. It would be great to surprise her. No! <laughs> From the creators of Queer Eye, three experts take less than a week to design the surprise dream weddings while telling the couple's love stories. Say I Do streams July 1st on Netflix. And the Hallmark Channel is celebrating Christmas in July with a 17-day movie marathon called Keepsake Christmas. The romance kicks off July 10th and features Hallmark Channel favorites, including Lacey Chabert and Candace Cameron Bure. That's your eye on entertainment. Nichelle Medina, CBS News, Los Angeles. I'll admit Christmas in July and Hallmark movies, kind of my weakness, <laughs> a kind of a guilty pleasure, but I guess I'm not alone because a lot no. of people eat that up as well. Uh, stay with us. We have a great show planned for you. We'll be right back here on North Dakota Today.